Thank you for listening today on Revealing Wholeness, sponsored by Infinity Whole Health. Check out our website at infinitywholehealth.com, where we are revealing the eternal in each individual, the infinite in the individual. The creativity is made manifest. Limitation is let go. Now, here's your host, Dr. Troy Munson. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy Munson at Infinity Whole Health. And I get questions all the time, and especially now as we enter the spring season. What can I do for my allergies naturally? And I want you to know that there are some real things that you can do for your allergies. I got three things that you can do right now that will help. Some will take time, some will be quick. But before we go into that, I want to also let you know that perhaps maybe there are some things that you might want to do before embarking upon an allergy correction journey and things like like oh to help you see the allergy and help you know you're getting better and that you are getting better is a blood test blood tests we can see on a blood test if you have an infection running because that'll make allergies more difficult Um, if you do have an infection i can look at the cells that are proliferating and that will tell me what kind of an infection and possibly even where the infection is And so blood work can be very, very helpful, especially when you go through all this work to get healthy. And then you look back and say, hey, my blood went from not so good. And now I'm in mostly optimal ranges and I feel amazing. You could have blood work now done every couple of years and just say, yep, I'm running on my norms, my optimals, because your optimals will be very, very narrow compared to a medical normal. Everybody has their own normals, but most of us fall within an optimal range, which is a very narrow band within that normal range that the medical profession will use. So a little plug there on how to read blood tests a little bit more. If you see a blood test and your doctor says you're fine, but you're on the edge of one of your norms, you're likely not fine. But that's just something to think about. So having blood work and then seeing pre and post can be quite nice to let you know that you did indeed achieve the results that you now feel. Next is, which is becoming more and more popular, is a microbiome test. In our gut, we have some 8 to 10 pounds of of a biome or or bacterial colonies, fungal colonies, yeast colonies that are all in there that are making up our gut, but also protecting us from things that are coming into us. They say we even have 50 to 70,000 different um, viral particles in our gut alone. And so we're passing all that information out of our body into the environment. And why do we do that? Well, part of it is communication with our environment and the microbes in the soil, because all the microbes in the soil represent the earth's biome. You know, the earth has a microbiome too. All of our soil, if we look at a walk into a forest, we've all these trees. Well, they let go of all of these leaves or pine needles or branches or the trees fall and we have this old growth forest, but we have all this ground covering and it keeps the the dirt underneath moist and protects the microbes in the soil so that they're constantly sensing what's going on in the environment. And don't you think for one moment that they're not sensing all the pollution and garbage that we're putting into our atmosphere and those microbes are literally changing and adapting to that level of toxicity. And they're putting out little viral particles to explain to everybody else, hey, this is how I handled it. And so you and I are breathing in that wonderful air and those, those little particles or those genetic pockets or packets or books, as we call viruses, And now all of a sudden our body is reading those genetic things saying, wow, you guys did this to to overcome that. I totally need this. And so we put that in our genetic code and now we are able to adapt to this new, more stressful, more polluted environment and yet stay healthy. That is the importance of not only our microbiome, but the earth's microbiome too. And having it tested can be important. You can say, hey, I'm doing pretty good. I'm eating fermented foods. I'm not overdoing sugars or carbs. I'm eating good proteins. I'm eating good fats. I'm eating good vegetables. Hey, look at how good my microbiome is. Great. Wouldn't you want to know that it was awesome? But let's say you have lots of allergies and you're like, wow, this is really pretty bad. Okay, great. But then if we do a bunch of work to get you better and all of a sudden we look at your microbiome and say, wow, this is really diverse. And my blood work looks really good. I know that I've achieved great results 
and now I can move forward and continue this wonderful progress that I've had. And hopefully once you do that, you don't think, well, I'm just going to go back to eating the way I was and doing whatever I was doing before, because ultimately that's what got you in the pickle that you're in now if you're suffering with allergies. Now, can allergies be truly environmental? Yes, but could we not boost your body's ability to resist your environment and to take care of you better? I believe so, absolutely. But it might take some special things. Now, I'm not talking about food allergies like, um, hey, if I eat strawberries, I break out in hives. Or if I eat walnuts, man, my throat closes up. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the seasonal allergies where I'm getting stuffy, red eyes, blowing my nose, sneezing all the time, definitely miserable. And so let's get into it. What are the three things that become so important to do? And if you've been around at all, you've heard me talk about gut acidification. And so what does that mean? It means that if I eat something or breathe something and that slowly works down my mucous membranes into my stomach and I can't digest those little particles into their smallest little bits, those now become an allergy to the system that can inflame my tissues and now make watery eyes, you know, red eyes, sneezing, stuffy, sore throats, stiff necks, all of it. And so we have this issue going on that our gut is not able to perform like it should. It's not sterilizing everything that comes into this hole under our nose and to these. And so how do we acidify the gut? I'm sure if some of you have been with me are like, he's going to say raw apple cider vinegar. You're right. I'm going to say raw apple cider vinegar. It's the easiest way to do it. Do most people love it? No. So that's why I take a pill to acidify the gut. There are many different enzyme products that I use and all of them do a little different something. And so when I test somebody, I'm looking at different aspects about which one would be the home run for them. There are some that are great to do no matter what. You could just blanket do it, but eh, there's better ways to do things. Let's say your particular allergies are because you have parasites in your gut and your blood tests show us that. And so we begin to work with an enzyme and now begin to digest those, those parasites. Maybe they're microscopic, one cell. Maybe they're macroscopic like worms. I don't know. But let's say we begin to digest those and all of a sudden those parasites are no longer living. They're not putting out toxicity and you're not miserable because there's so much toxins in your body. And now we've digested them and all of a sudden your allergies go away because we don't have this debt load in your blood and in your body and you're miserable. So that's just one aspect of things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So gut acidification cannot be, you know, left out in anybody's program. I think it's important for most of us. How potent is our digestive system? And weirdly enough, most people are on a low sodium diet and that's really a bad thing to do because the other half of sodium or table salt is if sodium's one half, the other half is sodium chloride for all you chemistry majors. That chloride molecule, or excuse me, atom is so vitally important because when we stick a hydrogen with it, we get hydrochloric acid. And that is what keeps our stomach acidic so that we can digest our food down to the smallest amino acids, vitamins, proteins, you know, they get broken down, you know, liberating minerals from, from plants. All that is required by a very strong digestive system. And if I accidentally take in something with salmonella, I'm going to digest the salmonella before it causes food poisoning in me. And so I want to let that sink in that gut acidification is incredibly important. The more acid your stomach is, the better we can digest nutrients and absorb them. Once it gets to the small gut, it now neutralizes most of the acid, but it's still mildly, mildly acidic to keep good colonies of bacteria healthy and resist growing bad bacterial colonies that like to thrive in alkaline environments. So your small gut is almost neutral, but it's just mildly acidic. And our large gut is then acidic or a little bit more acidic then to again protect it from bad bacteria colonies growing and to protect the good colonies, and so that we also can go to the bathroom. So we need to get rid of all that waste stuff that we're no longer, or that we don't need, or that we saw in our food, or that our body got rid of. We need to get rid of that by going to the bathroom, and that's really, really important. So all of that detoxification occurs with really good acidification of the gut. So I've beat that up massively. Next is 
liver support. So if we're going to acidify the gut and try to get toxicity and inflammation out of your body, I need a liver functioning well in order to do that. So if your gut is acid enough, but your liver's poor performing, we're going to see very, very slow uh, results on your allergic type symptoms. So we have products that will immediately open up blood vessels in the liver and try to clean the blood faster, which helps all of this feel much, much better. And it can do it quite quickly. But it also says that if that's effective, then we have a liver that's not working right and we need to go to work on that. So things that are helpful for a liver. If anybody's been around long enough, what am I going to say for liver support? I'm going to tell you beets and beet greens. They taste like dirt to me. If you love them, happy for you. Eat some more beets. You don't need a lot. I don't want you eating a whole beet every meal. You might not feel so good. You're going to get a lot of detox reactions with that. So be slow. Eighth of a beet is likely plenty. You can go over and do a little bit more as time progresses, but don't throw the tops of the beets out. Cut them up into a salad, eat them too. A lot of betaine in there, which is excellent for, for clarifying and, and cleaning out liver channels so that you can detox your blood even better. Next, liver. Eat liver. You know, it's helpful for the liver. So if your liver is not very good and you know you may have abused it in the past, then start getting some liver in your diet. Liver that's really good, that's done right, doesn't taste bad. I've had some nasty liver, but I've also had good liver that I could literally eat raw and it didn't taste bad. People are like, you ate raw liver? Ugh. Well, when it tastes good, it's not a big deal. If you ate something and you were blindfolded and this how it tastes, that's pretty good. And they told you it was slugs, would you freak out or just say, oh man, I had no idea slugs taste so good. Not that I know that they do, I'm just saying that. But we have a lot of mental stuff up here that stops us from doing something. Um, this morning, my wife gave me some kefir that she made with raw milk and it turned sour and it was like, whoa. But I still drank it because I'm like, ah, so what? It tastes sour. And here I am hours later, still alive. I don't feel sick. You know, so our body can take a lot of punishment if it works right. But food, when it's really good for us, it actually tastes different. And I've had little children want to chew my liver supplements because they needed it so bad they could actually taste it. And their body's like, please give that to me. So I'm always interested, especially with the little ones, what they will want to chew. Like, wow, your body's just that deficient. It just loves that product. It's just wild. So Let's move on to number three. So we went through gut acidification and supporting your liver. Last is removing inflammatory foods and products out of your diet. Now we talked and in, in kind of led to this at the beginning. I said, once we get you good and your allergies are under control or you don't have them anymore, if you go back to eating like you were before, guess what's going to happen? It's just all going to come back. So with any condition, we've got some heavy lifting to do. And that heavy lifting comes from making the necessary dietary changes or at least moving in that direction. And we have a vision on what we want to do. So what are inflammatory foods? You probably already know. Breads, grains, pasta, donuts, you know, sugar, candy, all the fun stuff. I'm sorry. But... It doesn't mean that you have to totally eliminate that. We just want to do it in a much lower, better way. So I'm always looking to upgrade my clients and you should want to upgrade your diet in any way, shape or form all the time, always looking for upgrades. If you are a McDonald's either and you love quarter pounders, then by golly, figure out how to make a quarter pounder that tastes pretty good at home. You think that's impossible because they put so many chemicals in it. Well, <laughs> yes, but there's probably ways to do it that's better. Every little upgrade you make is better. Let's say that on your, your quarter pounder, you want to put fresh onions and pickles that you buy from the store. Is that not an upgrade? Let's say you say, okay, I want a plain quarter pounder. Don't put any fixings on it. And now you buy organic ketchup and you're at home and you put organic ketchup on it that tastes the same as regular ketchup. And you put good mayonnaise on it and you put good mustard on it and real onions instead of reconstituted onions. Is that not an upgrade? It is. I commend you for doing that. I think that's awesome. 
look to upgrade anywhere. Now, if you're already eating really good stuff, then we'd say, okay, can you upgrade to grass fed? Can you upgrade to organic grass fed beef and butter and chicken and farm fresh eggs? Do you have that ability?